you know, I think that's, uh, we got like, you know, 20 minutes until therapy. It's not a good time to launch into a potentially deep conversation, but <clears throat> I was thinking about it. I don't particularly have to plan for therapy. I've got, we've got bullet point notes. We've got time. Thinking about your last video before that one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I love how half of our communication at the minute is like one sentence or like one emotion vibed inside, but primarily outside. It's like. It's like having a chat open on two different social media sites, but one of them is like glitchy as all hell. <laughs> the whole self abandonment thing. Or system abandonment, yeah, as well. I, th I think that might. That might summarise an awful lot of. fucking angst within our relationship for our, our entire lives. Not all of it, but... Yeah, that, uh... That accounts for a lot of shit. I didn't realise. Oh, yeah. Now that you mention it, it is, um... It is, yeah. That's... Because our, our protective strategies are like so fucking different. We've got the polarised versions there. I wonder if it's like this between every like host-persecutor dynamic. I think that was the... Um, we clashed, probably more intensely than than a lot with the exception of me and myself <laughs> and even then I think we were at least on par yeah easily I think that would be worth actually going into and exploring for us and for other people because that's a big portion of it. I I used to get so fucking angry at you because yeah, I didn't have the language for it, but yeah, because of exactly that, because you were abandoning us. You treated us as if our needs were less important than the needs of everyone around us. It pissed me off that anybody around us had their needs taken care of anyway, much less when it came at the cost of sacrificing us. And fuck, I'd get so angry with you. I thought you were doing it. I don't know. I, I thought it was deliberate. I thought it was, um. God, I just thought it was really fucking stupid. I mean, you're not wrong. I. Uh, <coughs> I am a little, because I didn't see what you were achieving there. I didn't see why you did it. I just thought it was like deliberate, fuck us, and uh, we don't matter. I didn't realise it was about safety. And it's the same way that how I responded was about safety as well. It was just in, in entirely the opposite fucking way. <laughs> Where I'd... I'd, I'd completely abandon everybody else's needs. I mean, fuck having people around us, Jesus Christ. I hated people. Only slightly in past tense. But...
I was, I'd call it selfish, but I, I don't know, maybe self-preserving is a better way to put it. It was all I could focus on. I didn't really have the resources spare to consider anyone else's experience. And I'd learned that empathy <coughs> was dangerous. It looked to me like any time you prioritised anyone's needs but ours, any time you had compassion or empathy, it was just used to manipulate you and to control you. So it seemed fucking stupid. I just thought everyone was like that. I, it didn't even occur to me. I thought people were either predators or victims. There was no in-between. And, um, yeah, very much everyone for themselves sort of mentality. No, I'm not. I'm not being, uh, <laughs> any of the words that fit that feeling of that concern you just had. <laughs> It, there's a lot more, like, nuance inside. No, it just, um, not complaining, I, I get entirely why I work that way. And I don't think there's anything that could have been done about it. And fuck me, it's still a bit of a difficult and manual process to work any other way. And also I see how we were both trying to keep this system safe. Just that our methods really did not complement each other. I used to get really fucking scared because your method was just like aggressively keep people away from us and prioritise only our needs, do only what was good for us. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't realise it at the time. I just... I just felt really scared, really anxious, and really like, you know, at the lightest end of the spectrum, it would be like really intense social anxiety and awkwardness and like gut punch drop of dread because, oh no, people are gonna really dislike us because of this thing that you've just said or done. And I realize now that that's because the way I kept us safe was by prevents and placating and fawning and making sure that people around us were happy so they wouldn't hurt us and making sure that we were likeable and agreeable and basically had no needs so as not to be inconvenient so we were never abandoned or attacked and You prevented abandonment by trying to make it so that people never wanted to leave. I prevented by making sure they never got close. Again, past tense. <laughs> yeah. Those two methods are um, a little bit stressful to try and use at the same time. Just a little. <laughs> Just a little, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, sorry for trying to keep us alive. All right, I'm not apologizing. I'm not sorry, fuck it. Well, God knows I'm not. I don't think either of us could have done any better. I think it's a big point though. It's a big point that if we'd understood sooner we might have been at each other's throats a little bit less. <laughs> Maybe worth talking about. When we don't have therapy in 10 minutes. Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. And a very interesting point. And <clears throat> really interestingly, like, when we had massive fights and got really angry with each other and like, oh my God. So much of the shit that, like, I'd, 
I'd wake up to just, what the fuck is this? Sort of things that you'd done to freak me out that you did very well. And, you know, it's like all, a lot of, a lot of different seeming arguments were really at the core about this. So I think you're right. I think that, like, that encompasses a lot. And I do think it's worth discussing. <laughs>